guys, hello and welcome to my Kiana matchup tier list. Today we will be talking about every single Kiana matchup. Note that this is not a detailed matchup guide because if I would do that, we would actually be sitting here for like six, seven hours straight if you talk about every single matchup in detail because for each and every matchup you need around, I would say 15 to 20 minutes to really cover everything from runes, items, um, how you play the lane, how you beat specific interactions. So I will be giving you a quick idea of how to play the lane and just rank the champ in this category in these categories right here. Okay. So let's actually get started with creating this tier list. And as you can see, I created these five categories here. First of all, we have the free LP. I mean, this is really self-explanatory. We have easy, a skill matchup, a really hard one, and then a matchup that is just impossible to play. Okay. I will be starting off by talking about Akali, okay? Akali is actually, I would say, a skill-based matchup. You can rank it hard or skill, um, basically depending on how good you are, okay? If you are really good, I would say Akali is actually a skill matchup. There are a couple of different things that you have to do. When she uses Q on you, you actually have to EQ, so you end up behind her and the Q doesn't hit you. That's the first thing. The second thing is don't E into her if her E is up and she's not using any other abilities. Because that way... She can actually E you while you are in your EQ. And that way, she just wins every trade. You can't win a trade if that happens. So that's the one mechanic you have to look out for. And also be careful level 1 because she can zone you off minions. Don't get hit by those. Just give up creeps, get the XP for it though, and then you are good to go. How do you actually kill her? You trade with her a couple of times, and then when she's slow enough, you can flash combo her with EQ ice. So you basically E, you click onto her with E, then you flash Q, and then you use RWQ auto attack, and she will die. So that's actually how I approach the Akali matchup. Let's actually move on to Ari right here. Ari is actually a hard matchup, I would say, because Ari does have the range advantage. If she holds a charm, there's no way you can ever go in. You can try to bait it, but against a really good player, this is not going to work, okay? And we are always assuming that these players are playing really good, that the Kiana is a professional and that the Ari is a professional as well, meaning they are experts at their champ, okay? Obviously, if you can pull this off in gold, that doesn't represent that Ari is an easy matchup, all right? Because that's not really how it how it works, okay? So let's actually talk about this matchup from a level perspective. Level 1, you can't really do anything. Level 2, you can try to farm from, from range. Level 1, obviously, you have to give up minions level 1 and just go for minions you can go for, okay? For rune specifics, I would say you can go Electro into Ari. You can also go for Strike. It's basically personal preference. Electro is a bit more aggressive. You have more trading options. Um, and the only way you can actually trade against Ari is if she wastes her charm. And that's simply not going to happen if she's good. And you can also try to E onto minions if you actually manage to somehow gain prior. So you E onto a minion, Q her, and then grab W to the side. She can't really hit the charm. Um, and that's how you can actually trade against Ari. Obviously, you can try to, to Q her when she tries to Q you. But that's not really working most of the time. And there is one really important trading pattern against Ari, which is basically using your Q when she uses auto W on you. Because she wants to use auto W auto on you. And in that moment, you have to use your grass Q. And then she, you are invisible. She can't hit the last auto attack and she doesn't proc Electro. That is really important, okay? Apart from that, there are not really many tradings pattern. If you manage to get a couple of good trades, it's the same thing with Akali, just flash combo her when she's slow enough, when she's in kill range, and you are good to go. Against Ari, personally, I prefer TP. Against Akali, I run TP as well. So just just a quick note right there. Let's actually talk about Akshan. Akshan is, in my opinion, a really easy matchup. This might seem weird because I know that many people are struggling, okay? There are a lot of really important things, though. The first one is that you don't lose too much HP early on. This is really important, okay? You don't lose too much HP early on. You basically have to chill out the first two levels, okay? You even have to give up minions. What will happen a lot is basically, and I can show this pretty quick, what will happen a lot is basically that Akshan will try to run into you. That's actually the wrong account. Um, what will happen is that Akshan will actually run into you. Give me a quick moment. So I had a game against Akshan right here, and if you look at this, he will actually start running into you really early, okay? He will try to deny you the first three minions right here in this exact moment. If he is good, he will actually stand right here, and he will actually try to deny you the minions. What you have to do in that moment is you have to walk up, trade your HP just for the XP of these minions, okay? So you don't have to walk up really far, but you have to walk up far enough so you actually gain the minions. 
uh, the minion XP. If you don't get the gold, that's not a problem, okay? So that's really, really important against Darkshan. As soon as you do that, the lane actually gets quite easy. You get to level 2, you get to level 3, and then you can basically hit Qs and proc his resolve bomb plating with it, okay? As soon as you hit a Q and you proc his bomb plating, what you can actually do after that is E auto Q onto him with grass and then grab grass again. So you want to permanently rotate with grass, basically, so he can't see you. And another really good trading pattern against Akshan is if he tries to use Q on you, what you want to do is use Q yourself with grass, and then he can't proc the passive shield if you W to the side within stealth, okay? And then it's again the same pattern. You can flash him whenever he's slow enough. So that's really, really important with Kiana that you trade well. And then after that, you actually have the opportunity to kill the enemy laner with a nice quick flash combo, okay? So that's basically it for Akshan. I don't think he's a really hard matchup. You can also put it at skill matchup if you want, but for me personally, I think Akshan is not a hard matchup. I think it's actually really relatively easy. Even if the Akshan plays perfectly, you can do a lot to, to be annoying or at least to even out the matchup. So I think this is not, not a really hard matchup. Also against Akshan, I really like going for Electro Q and NTP. And as I said, just go for quick trades and then one-shot him when you actually have the ability to, to go for it. All right. Then we actually have a Nivea. This is actually a really, really rough one. I don't want to put it in impossible, but a good Anivia is really freaking hard to deal with. This is for me hard or impossible, one of these two. I think I will put it in hard, okay? So the thing with Anivia, <laughs> it's basically that she can hold her Q all the time. She can auto attack you permanently and use E. So she can auto attack E, auto attack you. And easily proc electrocute with it. Anivia is not really popular as for now, but generally speaking, I would say that Anivia is definitely not a weak champion into Kiana specifically. Also, if you mess up one single combo and you end up being in her R and you can't W out, that's actually really, really, really annoying and frustrating to deal with, okay? Also, she has two lives, which makes your life a lot harder, so you basically have to kill her twice. So I think this is actually one of the one of the harder Kiana matchups. For sure, like, this is actually not that easy. And I also think that the building patterns that Anivia has, that are actually quite quite tanky, that's also relatively hard to deal with, okay? So her Rod of Ages builds are actually quite annoying as well. Also, when she goes Rileys, that's really annoying. I know I don't even know if that's a build currently, but generally speaking, Anivia's tankiness later on is also, is also an issue, especially if you have a passive up. That's really, like, annoying to deal with. I wouldn't say it's impossible, there are some ways to deal with it. You can EQ in grass, and even if she hits her Q, it's only one Q, so she doesn't have Electro yet, meaning you can maybe W out and trade that way. So that's how I would actually approach the matchup. And actually, against Anivia, you can go for first strike, in my opinion. This is just my opinion, though. Remember that all of this is subjective, so how do I explain this? It's subjective, like, it's my opinion. And some other Kiana mains maybe approach this differently, but this is just my take on these champions, okay? So this is not right or wrong. This is just my way of playing it and how my results have been throughout the last three or four years of playing Kiana, okay? So this is basically how I would approach Anivia as a matchup. I would go for a strike. I would actually play for Dirk into Profane and then just try to, to excel at team fighting. Then we have Annie. Free LP, not, of, not at all. Easy also, not really... For me, it's actually between hard and skill. Um, I will put it in hard because she can hold her stun all the time if she plays it perfectly. She can auto attack you all the time because the auto attack range is really, really, really hard to deal with. You probably even have to go for Doran's shield second win in this matchup, or at least second win and then like long sword refillable and TP so you can TP back into lane. Um, so this is actually quite hard to verse if she never uses her, her stun, okay? And to be honest, Against any, I would also consider just going for Dirk into Profane, running TP and playing for team fights. Because realistically speaking, if she holds her stun, you are never really killing her. You can try to poke her down a bit with Q, but you can never really E onto her um, as long as she has her stun. And that's the hard part about this matchup. So I would be really cautious when versing in any, focus on CSing and try to excel at team fighting. That's basically how this matchup works. I could tell you, yeah, if she screws up, do this and that, but. I mean, that's not really going to happen if you play against a good any, right? So if she uses her stun and she only has like one stack, surely like you can E onto her, auto attack her and try to kill. Of course. But we are talking about a good any player here and that's not going to happen. Like that's just not going to happen at all. 
All right, so next up we have Aurelion Sol. I would actually say this is a hard one. Aurelion Sol is a really annoying level one because he can permanently poke you and you can't even get E start into him. Because if you E start into Aurelion Sol, he can actually outrate you really hard if she just stands if he just like stands still and keeps like his Q onto you because then he just gets you to half life. So level one it's actually quite hard. And apart from that, I'm not really sure. I would actually say against Aurelion Sol, after level three you do have trading options. So I would say it's a skill matchup. If you actually manage to outplay him with grass, so you basically Q him with grass, and then you can maybe grab ice, walk to him, auto attack him, okay? And then when he tries to fly into you and use Q, you can maybe use ice Q, okay? And then just root him with that and run away. So that's maybe one trading pattern to look out for. And of course, you can just flash him uh, when he's low enough. Also, you can get prio against Aurelion Sol if he arrives a bit too late to the lane, and then you can maybe use the, the minions as as a battering ramp to actually E onto them and Q him, okay? And then you also have some, some killing opportunities. So I would say it's a skill matchup. I would personally run second wind with Electrocute into him. And then I would also go for TP into Aurelion Sol. I wouldn't run Ignite at all into, into each one of these matchups. All right, uh, next up on the list, we do have Asia. Um, I would say Asia is a hard matchup, to be completely honest, because he has a really nice disengage with his E. You can never really E onto him if he's good after level 6. That's a really big issue. You can never really jump onto him if he actually has his, his E up, unless, and that's, uh, you can actually put it in skill matchup, Unless he actually screws up a little bit. If he tries to E away and you W behind him, you can actually block his E. And then you can auto attack him down. So you can go for a kill lane here and actually go for Electrocute with Ignite, in my opinion. That is definitely an option. But I would say that you're better off going for TP, generally speaking. Because if he plays it right, it's actually quite hard to kill. So you want the wave to actually come into you. And just be careful. I would go for Second Wind and for Overgrowth, okay, with Electrocute. Go for Longsword here with a refillable and just minimize well. Go for the melee minions, okay? So you actually get gold right there. And go for the melee minions. Give up ranged minions if you have to because melee minions give you more gold. Um, and also just play for CSing. And if he screws up, you can E auto Q onto him. He can't do anything against the trade. If you are able to E auto Q onto him with grass and you are invis after that, he can't really trade back. You can W away from him. And he can at max hit one Q auto attack after that. And that's basically about it. And you win that trade easily because he actually has he actually has like only one trading option, which is Q auto attack, basically. So I would definitely consider that consider that matchup a skill matchup. But as I said, after level six, it's relatively hard to fight him because you can never E onto him. You can just argue into the tower if he has a good wave state. So that's actually relatively hard. Also, he outscales you pretty hard. Like, Asia just scales really well. So that's also one thing that would, yeah, make me a bit cautious against this champion, okay? All right, so we talked about Asia. Let's actually talk about Ukasio next. I'm actually considering to put Casio into easy. This might seem weird because she actually has, she has a ground which makes you unable to move, basically. And I understand that people struggle with this. But with Cassio, it's actually quite simple. You basically hold grass. And whenever she hits Q onto you, what you want to do is you want to Q her in grass. And then she can't E because she can't see you, basically. And in the meantime, like when your Q grass actually expires, her empowered damage from her Q also is gone. So it's actually really easy to trade like that. As for runes, I would also go for Electrocute here. And you can even go for Presence of Mind. But actually, I think second wind and overgrowth is the is the right call here. And also, by the way, guys, I always go for treasure hunter. Basically, I don't really run ultimate hunter anymore. And relentless has like it got nerfed, so I actually prefer treasure. And if you get one or two kills, you can actually get a lot of gold from it. So against Casio, as I said, level one, you can't do anything. You can try to hit to like skill your Q. Okay. If she skills Q, you can actually E onto her level 1 as well if she walks up too close to your minions. But apart from that, I would say 
skill Q, try to farm, minimize. Then you can try to hit an EQ with grass. So you can just EQ her with grass, auto attack and W away. But you have to be careful so she doesn't hit her Q and then she can actually run you down. So you have to be careful with engaging onto Casio. You only really want to engage if you can kill for sure. Because if you engage and you try to run away, you are not getting away from Casio. You are not running away from Casio if she's good. Because she can Q and if she hits the Q, you are dead. You are straight up dead or you lose like 80% of her HP and your lane is over basically. So I would say it is an easy matchup, but you have to play it well. If you play it well, you have the edge over Casio because it's really hard for her to deal with short trades. She wants extended trades and with Kiana, you can go for short trades really well. So I would definitely consider this an easy matchup. And with that being out of the way, we can actually move on to Corky. And oh boy, I've been struggling with Corky this season. I would actually even consider Corky an impossible matchup, bro. This seems really weird, I know. But since he got buffed, and like in a general sense, Corky is really hard to play. Really hard to play. I don't know. It just feels weird. He, if he goes for Hell of Blades and Taste of Blood, you can never outrate him. No matter what you do, you can never outrate him. I tried everything. I tried Electro. I tried First Strike. I tried TP. I tried Ignite. I played everything against this champion. And I was not able to outrate him a single time with like really focusing on it, okay? Because he has his E. And even if you are in stealth, the E damage still goes through, obviously. So it's really hard to dodge out on his damage. It's really hard to proc First Strike. You can try to E auto Q him. But after you get out of stealth, he just outtrades you like nothing. It's really hard to deal with it. So I would actually consider this impossible or hard. I don't want to say impossible though. So maybe I would put it in hard, but yeah. Generally speaking, I would say electrocute with second wind is good. You can try to go for trades, but as I said, it's really hard. He can just W away as well, and then you have to abuse that window. But a good Corky knows his damage. And as soon as he goes back early and gets that Dirk Rush, it's really hard to deal with him. Especially because he won't use W. If you EQ onto him or like E auto Q onto him, he will just wait in your stealth, hold his E and then just like outrate you really hard with Hell of Blades and Taste of Blood. So that's really hard to deal with, um, at least in my opinion, okay? Maybe I'm playing it wrong, but for me personally, Corky is a very hard matchup. Alright, actually we should also talk about Brand, okay? Because Brand is actually a matchup that is coming up more and more. Some people are actually picking Brand. So what I would do against Brand is basically play for first strike. I don't think you kill this champion if he's good. He can always outrate you by using E onto the wave. You kind of have to space that, which is not as easy. And then also what you have to do against Brand is basically maybe try to hit an EQ on him, go invis, and then after that you can maybe one-shot him. But apart from that, if he holds his Q, you can't really jump onto him because your E is unchangeable. Like, you can't really change the... The duration of your E. If you E onto him, you E onto him. I mean, you can cancel your E animation with W, of course, but then you basically miss out on the E damage and what's the point of going in anyways? Then, like, there's no point, right? So whenever you use Q, he can time his... Uh, whenever you use E, he can time his Q with it, and then you're stunned, because he can just use E Q on you. And then if he hits W, R, you are going to die. Like, there is no way you kill him, actually. So I would go TP, first strike, and then just play for team fighting with Dirk Profane, basically. So that's my take on this matchup. Now that we talked about that, let's actually move on to the next one. And right here we have Echo. Honestly, Echo is a really easy matchup. I would even say Echo is free LP if you are really good. So level 1 and 2, you have to be a little bit careful, okay? For me personally, I think Echo is really easy to play around. If you don't get hit by his Q, you can't lose trades. Because you can auto-EQ him. So if he tries, so let's say he hits the Q, then you just like don't trade with him. Don't trade with him. Because after he hits his E, you can't really do anything anymore. Like you will get an auto attack then and he will get electro with his passive and you can't really trade with him anymore because then you are way too low and that's just your fault. But if he misses his Q, you basically have a nine second window to jump in onto him and do whatever you want. And his W is really easy to dodge. It's really not that hard. Um, and Echo can also be killed quite easily because you can actually bait his R with your R. So you basically R him, get him low, and after that he has to use his R because otherwise he will die. And then after that you can just kill him with your normal abilities because Kiana is a lot stronger 
Remember, Kiana has two Q rotations, whereas Echo has one single combo, which is like E forward, Q, and then like E auto onto you, and that's it. Like after that, he can't do anything anymore. It's just over. And with Kiana, you have your E, which you can outplay his W with, and you can also just play around. You can play around his passive damage with your invisibility really well as well. So I think Echo is actually a really easy matchup to verse. I would go for Electrocute here, and then I would actually go for Presence of Mind, Last Stand, and for TP. Alright guys, let's move on to the next matchup. And then we have Fizz. So let's actually talk about Fizz, the little little fish. This is a hard one. I wouldn't say... I'm really considering to put him into skill. And it probably is a skill matchup, I would say. You can put Fizz into hard as well. But I would say Fizz is just insanely hard to deal with if he plays well. Level 1, you have to skill Q or W, basically. If you can see that he skilled his W, going for Q is really good. Because then you can Q him and don't get hit by his empowered like W auto attack range, right? So that's something that you have to note for level 1. If he skills E, you have to skill W and just die W away. So you basically walk up to the minions. If he tries to E and hit you with it, you just W away. Then after that, it's actually quite hard to play because you kind of have to be aware of his trading patterns under tower. He can WQ auto attack you and E out of the tower. And after that, you are just like Half-Life and he didn't lose a single bit of HP because obviously he can just E out the tower range and he doesn't get a tower shot at all. So that's actually really annoying. And that's something you have to look out for. Also, it's really easy for you to dodge his R though. So that's why I would say it's a skill matchup. Level 1 to 3, I think Fizz definitely has dash, right? But I think after that, you can definitely make something happen. And that's why I, I would actually say it's a skill matchup, okay? Talking about the matchup further, I would go for Electrocute, I would go for Last Stand, and for Presence of Mind, and guys, you basically have to go for Ignite, in my opinion at least. If you go for TP against Fizz, and he goes Ignite, he will always have the edge in lane. It's really hard to do something if, if that's actually the case. So against Fizz, I would definitely consider going for First Strike, uh, for Electrocute, and then what you can also do, as soon as he WQs onto you, you can auto-EQ him pretty quick, proc Electro with it, stay in stealth, because the Q has to be grass in that case, and after his E is over, you can basically W away and you win the trade. Because him hitting WQ doesn't proc Electro, and if you auto EQ in the right moment, you can actually proc Electro on him. So you have to wait for him to like WQ onto you, okay? And then he wants to use another auto attack, of course, because he wants to proc Electro, right? And if he does like if he does that, if he uses WQ onto you, you have like half a second window to use auto EQ. And in that time he can't use an auto attack. And that way you can actually dodge out on his electro damage and you can basically win the trade with it, okay? So that's how I like to approach that's how I like to approach the laning against Fizz, okay? And then you can basically try to fast combo him if he used his E and if it's on cool. Oh, sorry guys, I'm a bit tired today. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. Alright, so let's actually talk about the next matchup here. And the next matchup on the list is Galio, if I didn't miss anything, exactly. Alright, so Galio is an impossible match matchup. You can't do anything against Galio. Meaning, how do we approach an impossible matchup? You can never jump onto him because of his W. You can never jump onto him because of his Q. You can never walk up because of... Uh, you can never jump onto him because of his E and his W. And you can never walk up to hit minions because of his Q. Okay? So what you have to do is pick for a strike. Because you are really good at hitting first strike on him. He's a melee champion, he has to walk up. So hitting first strike on him is the easiest task ever with your Qs. And after actually hitting first strike on him, what you have to do is back off, wait for your next first strike rotation, farm well, and just keep hitting first strike. And with time, you will actually get more gold because he's not running the room, okay? And then you can excel at teamfights. And obviously you run flash TP. There's nothing else to say about this matchup. It's actually that, that simple. You just play for first strike and get a lot of gold. Next up, we have Gragas. Gragas is an impossible matchup as well. The same things I just said about, like, the same things that I just said about Galio also apply to Gragas. Play first strike, go for team fights, out gold him, and that's it. I wish it would be, like, easier to, to verse these champions, but it's not, you are not possible. It's just, it's impossible to win against these champions in lane. It's just not possible. You are not doing it. F like, forget it. 
you can try if they mess up. Like, obviously, guys, always, when they mess up, like, these champions, you can all you can kill all of them if they mess up. That's not the point. But most people in higher elos don't mess up. And I'm, like, looking at this from a high elo perspective, okay? I'm not saying I'm insanely high elo, but Masters is relatively high in relation to, to the rest of the player base. So I would say that from Masters on, Masters Plus, um, you, you, like, this is how I would approach these matchups. Okay, then we have Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger is not really a mid lane champion anymore, so I'm actually considering to not even cover it. Like, you can EQ Grass onto him, get him low, flash him when he's low enough, and that's it. Like, there's not much more to say. You can also go for Electrocute with Presence of Mind last stand here. So I would actually say this is actually free LP. He can never really hit stuff onto you if you're good. If you are better than Heimer, like, your champion is better than Heimerdinger, so if you are playing, if you are playing as good as he is, you always win, basically. All right, then we have Irelia. <sighs> this is rough, to be honest. A good Irelia is unbeatable, in my opinion. But I would say it's hard. Um, I have tried to kill an Irelia with Kiana so often already. <sighs> but actually, this is a skill matchup. This is rough. I'm actually considering to put it in impossible and to also put it in skill. So if you actually dodge her E with your W... And you wait out, um, yeah, and you wait out. So I would say it's a skill matchup, and that's the key of it. You basically hold grass, and then you try to auto EQ her when she jumps into you, and then you try to dodge her, her E with your W, okay? By grabbing ice or grabbing rock. And after that, she's a free kill, basically. Unless he jumps around the wave, and you have a huge wave that you're fighting in, but that's basically your fault then. So I would say it's a skill matchup, but if the Aurelia is good and she hits the E, you, you die. You die. Like, guys, you just die. If you get hit by Aurelia's E, it's over, and it's your fault, and game is over. Especially because she always out CSs you, and after she has a Vampiric Scepter, it's impossible to trade with her. Because one good trade, and you're like, yeah, look, man, I out traded this guy easily, um, she's half-life, one wave, and she's full-life again. And you're like, bro, like, what just happened? What just happened? How How is this guy full-life again? So, that's the issue with Aurelia. But in late-game teamfights, you completely outscale Aurelia, especially if you have first strike. So I would say it's a skill matchup, and if you look at late game, I would actually say it's free LP. I mean, yeah, she can build tanky, but you can just one-shot the rest of her team. And if you go LDR currently, which is highly buffed, it's really easy to, to actually play the matchup. Alright, next up we have Jace. Jace is being played a lot. I would say Jace is actually a skill matchup, um, but you can also put it in hard. I would put it in hard if the Jace is really good, because it's really hard to trade him. If you jump onto him, he can just go into his melee form and dash, like, knock you away, and then it's, like, impossible to play, basically. And because you have no E anymore, so you kind of have to poke him down and then flash him if he if he's stupid. But if he's not stupid, the lane is really hard to play. So in this matchup, I would actually go Electro, though. And I do have a short that I actually want to show you, okay? So this is how I actually managed to also follow my TikTok, if you haven't yet. I post some, some short clips right there. I have a clip against Jace. This is how you kill Jace as Kiana. Level 1, you stay back. Then if he walks up, you hit so a stay back, you basically have to you play around grass. If he's like as soon as you hit level unconscious, three, you, you basically e, e, auto Q him. Then, then you, then you basically away. stand stealth, run right. away. You and then grab you grab grass, grass again, again okay. Then you e, e auto Q again, again if he walks up to the cross. And now you basically wait in stealth on the edge and then auto second down. As soon as you get close up to him, you drop you forward. If he's stupid. Auto. Usually like... Auto. So and now he comes up, EQ, like, if you play flash the late, one last auto attack. So I would actually still still this is how you kill Jace as Kiana. Hard tier, for sure. Alright. Um, as for runes, I go Electro and Second Wind. If he likes to poke you a lot, Second Wind is... It's really nice. Okay. Next up. Let's see what we have to talk about. Ba -ba -ba. I do see some colors, some Kaisas in mid lane. So I will actually cover it, okay? I would actually say Kaisa is a is an easy matchup. Um, level one to three, you basically suffer, and you are not allowed to get hit by her W. If she doesn't hit her W, you can trade with her freely, okay? But she will just hold it because her W actually reveals. So your grass is really really hard to use if she hits the W because she has vision over you. But as soon as you dodge her W, the lane is basically over for her, okay? And then you can again flash her, use the combo that I talked about earlier, or just generally speaking, like, go for her with flash, and then it's pretty much over. 
So I would say it's a pretty easy matchup, and you can also run Ignite, you can also run TP, it basically depends on your preference. And yeah, that's basically about it with the Kai'Sa matchup. I don't want to go in that too much, actually, because I think Kai'Sa is really easy to play around. Like, it's quite obvious what she wants to do. She wants to auto-attack you three times with Hell of Blades. And then just scale into her late game build. But to be honest, your R is way more, like, way more impactful than Kai'Sa's R in late game teamfights. So you are definitely fine with um, playing against this champion later on as well, unless she hits the W. That's the thing. If... Kaisa does hit the W, you are in, in, in trouble. If she does not hit the W, it's actually quite easy to play around, okay? Okay, let's move on. Next up, I would say we have Karma. I didn't see anything else that's played mid lane, exactly. Yeah, we can straight up put this in impossible. Dodge her stuff, play for play for CS, play for not losing too much HP, play for team fights. You can never jump onto her. She can root you instantly. It's a point and click ability. You can basically not fight her early on. It's not possible. You can basically not fight her level 6. If she goes one ruby crystal, the lane is already not killable anymore. Um, and also, like in teamfights, you are a lot stronger again. So play around your R. I would, like, you can go for first strike. You can also go for electro here. I would say go for electro and pick TP, right? And then by doing that, you actually have the option to just TP back into lane if the lane is not going well. And yeah, that's basically how, how I would approach the matchup. As I said, this is still very um, subjective and it's just my opinion. All right, next up on the list, we do have Cartus. I want to include Cartus. I played against one Cartus this season mid lane. If he goes exhaust, you can't play the lane. Same thing for Karma. Just remember that. Go for a strike, try to get some gold. You are not killing this guy. He can Q you level 1 permanently. He can perma push, push the wave. He can perma get prio. You can never jump onto him because he can insta use his E and use exhaust. And you are dead. <laughs> it's that simple. You are just going to die. Uh, then we have Kassadin. Kassadin is free LP as a matchup. If he scales, you will lose the game. If you end the game before 25 minutes, you will win. It's that simple. There's not much to say about Kassadin. You can just E auto Q onto him. You always win trades. You are AD and he's anti mage. So it's really easy to play against this guy. He can build tanky, but you always have prio as well. So whenever you have prio, you can just look to do stuff with your team. He can't really follow, especially if you slow push waves. The matchup is actually really simple. There's not much to say to this, like, for. Specifically for the Kassadin matchup, okay? So I would really say play play for slow push, roam a lot. And if he walks up into your E range, you can auto automatically e auto queue him, okay? Alright, guys. Next, after Kassadin, we do have Katarina. Katarina is a pretty easy matchup. Don't get hit by her Q too often, level 1. She will try to walk up and Q you. If she doesn't do that, she will Q the first three minions, get them. Um... You can basically get prior on this lane. You can skill Q or W, both things are fine. And I would go Electrocute, Presence of Mind, Last Stand, and Ignite. Uh, try to EQ her a lot, and then auto take W away. She can't really follow up after that, especially if she wasted her, her Q on the wave, because then she only has EW, and you can basically play around that. Also, if she jumps onto you, you can always just auto EQ, WQ her, or like auto EQ, grab W, and then just run away. So this matchup is actually pretty easy. And when she's low enough, you can ice Q her, W, and then ER her onto a wall, and then Q and kill, basically. So the Karina matchup is actually quite easy. And guys, really important, ping that she is roaming. This is essential. If you don't ping that she's roaming, it's 100% your fault if you lose the lane. So I will definitely do that. And then you should actually be good to go. Karina is not that hard to play against. So if you actually have issues there, just be careful when she has Conqueror. That's a lot more scary than Electric could actually. Because then she can go for extended trades if you screw up. But if you don't screw up the trade, you should be you should be good to go. Next up on the list, we have LeBlanc. You don't win against LeBlanc. You just basically try to minimize, get him, get as much farm as you as you can. You can go electrocute here with second wind, long sword refillable, go back, get Dirk by a profane as fast as possible. You will be down 20 to 30 CS if she plays well, and after that you just win in team fights. That's how the matchup goes. Alright, next up on the list, we do have Lissandra. Lissandra is also an impossible matchup. You don't really win against her. If she, like, you can try to bait her W by going in. Um, and then just, like, using your E cooldown that is lower than her W cooldown to go in again. But she can also E out, so there's no way you really kill her ever. So I would actually say this matchup is not really possible to win. Unless she messes up, but as I said, we are talking about perfect matchup execution here. 
And then after that, I would basically go for TP and try to play for good skirmishes and team fights. Because in skirmishes and team fights with your R, I personally think you are stronger. Really important item tip right here, go for Edge of Night, because that way she has a really hard time. She actually has to use her Q, her W or her E before being able to R you. And if you dodge her Q, she has to use one of her key abilities to proc Edge of Night, and then it's really hard for her to, to use R on you, okay? So I would definitely say that Lissandra is not really possible to win, but in team fights and later later stages of the game, you, you can actually outplay by using your R in favorable positions, okay? Then we have Lux. Lux is actually an easy matchup. Obviously, a good Lux will actually hold her, her Q, but she will try to E you a lot. And with Kiana, you have good dodging options with your W and with your E. You can also E onto minions to dodge her W, uh, to dodge her E. Killing her is hard, especially if you go for barrier. Um, so I would just like try to trade after she used her E, because then she only really has Q. But it's important that you use grass initially, okay? So use grass initially and go for electrocute and TP, in my opinion. I wouldn't go for second wind because you don't really need it. I would actually go for last stand and presence of mind. Um, that gives you more trading options, especially if you hit your Q, which is not really that hard on Lux. And uh, yeah, be careful to not really underestimate her W. Her W is actually quite strong. It gives her a big shield, especially combined with barrier. So don't overestimate your killing pressure on Lux, okay? And as soon as she wastes her Q, you can obviously try to do something. But apart from that, I would really just take a chill, try to farm, dodge her E with your with your with your E or with your W, and that's basically about it. Next up, we have Malphite. I mean, do I even have to talk about this, guys? Don't get Q too often. Go for a second wind and go for longsword or Dorn shield, depending on your preference and how well you can play the matchup. You will be down 10-15 CS, probably, because whenever he uses Q, you can't really CS, so after 10 minutes you should be down 10-15 CS, but that's not really a big deal if both play perfect, and your team fighting is really strong, uh, so you can out-team fight Malphite there as well. You can see a pattern here against all of these impossible matchups, in my opinion, you actually have the option to out-team fight them, and that's the only way how to, how to approach it with Kiana, and that's also why Kiana is the best assassin, in my opinion, because... She's the assassin, like the assassin with the most impactful ultimate ability, okay? And that's like the reason why I would consider Kiana the strongest assassin in the game for the last like three or four years. No cap. Even though I don't want to be delusional and just, I can just say it out loud because that's how it is. Malzaha is an easy matchup. Play around his shield, try to proc it with Q, then you can E auto Q him, grab W, rock, run him down and kill him. It, before level 6, this is really easy. After level 6, you can't really do that anymore. So be careful after that. Also, you never have prior, so you can't really roam. That's also really important. You will lose a lot of platings, so keep keep an eye out for that. And um, yeah, that's basically about it. That's not much to say for for the Malzahar matchup. I personally would go TP. You can also go Ignite if you prefer to. But yeah, that's basically the matchup in a, in a nutshell, okay? Also, you all team fight him hard. He only has one. Oh, and also Edge of Night is really good here as well, for obvious reasons. Okay, next up, we have... Ba, 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 ba. Who's the next mid laner? I've seen Mordecai is up, but that's also relatively simple. Like, just don't fight him. But I won't even include this guy. Morgana, I, I've seen Morgana a couple of times. Don't get hit by her Q. You can get, you can get hit by a W. I think Electrocute with second wind is really good here. If you get hit by her E, second wind actually heals that up again. And if she wastes her Q, yeah, it's actually really easy to fight her after that. Be careful though that her black shield will actually block your R. So actually you can put this in hard because of that fact. Um, so yeah, I would actually put it in hard or impossible actually if I think about it. Because as soon as she has R, you can't E onto her because then you just basically get stunned for sure. She can follow up with Q, she can follow up with E and that time the jungler is probably there so just die. Yeah, let's put it in impossible actually. Just play for team fights as well. Um, okay. Next up on the list, we do have Nafiri. Nafiri is free LP, if you are better. Because against Nafiri, if you don't get hit by his Q, it's really easy to dodge things. He is just not going to hit anything. After that, he has no damage. Um, you just have to space his Q. You have to keep his Q range in mind. And then just stay away from it. And then you can also W away. And after he used his first Q, he has to use the second charge of his Q as well. So if you just wait... After that, you basically have a, I don't know how long his Q cooldown is, like 8, 9 second window to just E auto Q onto him and proc Electro every single time. I would go Ignite, you have a lot of kill pressure against this guy. 
So basically electrocute, ignite, presence of mind, last stand is how I would approach this matchup. All right, next up on the list, we have Nico. Nico is, I'm considering to put it in hard or in skill. A good Nico is really hard to burn. Yeah, I would actually say hard. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You can minimize well with Wing away from her Q by not getting hit by her E and just playing for range, but you never really kill. You have no kill pressure and also have to play for team fights. And her R is actually similarly good in team fights. So this is actually a rough one. I would say Nico is one of the better picks into Kiana for sure. Definitely. And I also think that Nico can be really annoying to verse, especially if you are not good with dodging her Q. So it's really important that you look at the champion and as soon as you see the Q animation going on from the champion, you just W back. It's an automated process that you can learn and by that you basically just win the lane. Or like, no, you don't win the lane, but you basically minimize really well in that lane, okay? Also, I would go TP, Electrocute and Second Wind with Overgrowth in this lane specifically. All right, next up on the list, do we have Oriana? So Oriana is, in my opinion, one of the harder matchups, but you can also put it into skill. Here's why. If Oriana walks up too close to the minion wave, and guys, I've seen GM Oriana's do this, okay? You can just E onto them hit two auto attacks with Electro and Second Wind, and she's Half-Life. She's basically Half-Life. There's nothing she can do against that. Which is great. Which is absolutely great. So that's something you can always do, and after that you basically have to play slow. As soon as you're level 2, you can skill Q and then EQ auto her instantly. And then she loses a lot of HP there, and after that it's actually really, really easy to play, to be honest. Um, I can also show you another clip that actually was it, like against This Oriana. is how you kill Oriana. You use grass like... So Oriana walked up relatively close here. I'm this level is how two, Oriana and I actually use hit my level two Ask with grab rock, and she auto didn't like she didn't know that. Okay. Like, so you then I just auto kept auto attacking her. her basically. Don't use anything. Then she thinks that she can kill you. Like you, you pretend really you can't fast. kill her. Okay, basically, have to surprise her. Look how fast I use my Q. My second W is already grabbed, and then I use the second EQ again. And she just explodes basically after that. So if you are low and Oriana is low, you obviously win, right? Because your champion is really good at executing and her her champion is not good at executing, okay? After level 6, it does get rough because she can shield herself and just R, okay? So I would say this, this is actually a skill matchup. But if both play perfectly, you will lose... A, yeah, you have to trade HP for CS and you will also lose CS, okay? Basically means that you will be 20 to 30 CS down. So I would say it's a skill matchup or a hard one. You can, yeah, this is like not that obvious for me, but I would say it's it's more skill than hard. Okay, now that we talked about Oriana, we have Pantheon. Honestly, guys, this is just impossible. I would play first strike with Resolve here, actually. Try to not lose too much early on, don't get by Skew too often. And try to play for teamfights. He can W whenever he wants, you never really have the opportunity to fight him. If you get a gank, make sure to E behind him, okay? So that's actually really important, but he will just not use his, his E until you actually E onto him if he's good. And that's really, really rough. So I would actually say he is relatively hard to play against as Kiana, and also you have to grab grass permanently. All right. Um, bup, 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 bup. Okay, Rumble, guys, this is straight up impossible as well. Honestly, go for a strike, play for Dirk Profane, play for team fights. I won't even I won't even explain why. Like this is obvious. He can just Q, you can't ever walk up to him. He can shield himself, so you he just nimigates all your damage. And then also he just has an ability that actually gives him movement speed, right? So it's really hard to verse, man. It's really hard to verse. Yeah. So I would actually say this is also an impossible matchup. Don't try to fight him, go for first strike and approach the lane that way. Alright, next up on the list we have Rice. I am not playing against Rice that often, to be honest. But, 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 in my opinion he's an easy matchup. He can root you, but in the time where he roots you, you can just EQ. 
or use grass generally speaking if he tries to follow the combo he can hit the q afterwards but i think overall this matchup is not as hard one or two good trades and you can kill him early on remember that your killing window goes away after after he has some items though simply because he will be quite tanky he can also stack armor okay so you have to be careful with that but i think pre-6 this matchup is actually pretty easy not as hard try to not get outraded by him too hard early on um, he will perma shove the wave into you, he will try to stack wave so he can get prio and in that meantime where he tries to get prio you can actually just focus on farming, ping and he's also not that strong at skirmishes so even if he gets prio he can't really do much early on. So I would actually say this matchup is definitely not as hard and you can you can surely make things work in this one. I would go for electro second wind and for, for overgrowth right. Uh, you can also go for first strike actually it's better in the late game. But if your team actually has an early game combo, I would actually consider going for going for Electrocute here. Alright, let's actually keep going here. Seraphine is not really played mid lane. I haven't played against one single Seraphine. But this one is also simple. I mean, I can just put it in. This one is actually pretty free. She can't really do much earlier and she can try to poke you, but you can actually just farm all the time. And your team fighting is stronger than hers, actually, in my opinion. Sure, she has a W, her empowered one. And she also has her R. But your R just deals so much more damage. And also gives you a similar amount of CC. So I actually think that Seraphine does provide a lot for the team. But your R is just strong in team fight. So just don't get outraded by her. Try to farm. And then after farming, you can actually win win team fights really easily with Kiana against Seraphine. Okay. Next up on the list, we have... We can talk about Singed. So Singed is actually free LP. There's nothing he can do. You can always EQ him W away. He can't really do much after that. Um, the champion is not really hard to verse. Not at all. He will just try to perma push wave. Just ping your team. If they don't listen, you don't care. You keep playing. With Profane or with Tiamat, you always get prior. You can even get prior, generally speaking, because he can't really walk up and just walk past the wave to use his poison on, poison on it. Um, how is he supposed to do that? You can just auto attack him in the meantime and kill him, basically. So it's really hard for him to actually verse you in the mid game, uh, in the in the lane. So I would actually say that this matchup is 100% free LP. 100% free LP. Exactly. Actually, I was reconsidering the Seraphine one here. If you play a really good one, she can perma push waves, get prio. Yeah, of course. But nah, I would actually keep it here because I think she's really vulnerable to team fights. Or like also side laning. You can't side lane with her, but Kiana is really good at side laning actually. So I would I would still stick with it. Okay, let's actually move on right here. We have Silas. Okay. Silas is a skill matchup. There's no doubt about that. You just have to pick Ignite here. You have to fight him early on. You have to actually grab W level one and then fight within your minion wave. Don't get hit by his E level one. You go for Electrocute and then last stand presence of mind with Ignite. And you have to be really careful to not get hit by his E. If he misses his E level 1, then you are easily good to go. There's nothing he can do after that. It's really, really simple. And also Ignite is important because you mimigate his heal, basically. And you have a lot of kill pressure. Because after he used E into you, he has no escape anymore. He can't run anywhere. So after that, it's basically a free kill. So I would actually really consider going for Ignite against Silas. I think it's a must, actually. I wouldn't go for First Strike and TP and play the lane that way. Obviously, dodge is E, and then you're good to go. Okay, next up on the list, we have Set. Set is played mid lane. You can't do anything against him. Play for strike, play for team fights. Same with Malphite. Don't do anything else. I won't even talk about this matchup, guys. There is legitimately no way you actually play against Set and win the matchup. That's not going to happen. Don't even try. Just play for the proper... Just, just have a proper gameplay here, okay? Game plan here. That's the that's the most important thing. Next up, we have Syndra. I'm actually putting this in hard. A good Syndra will always hold her E, making it really hard for you to engage. You can try to bait her E by walking up to a minion, but not with the intention to get the minion, but with the intention to W away. So be, pre be prepared for Syndra to use E. Pretend to kill a minion and then bait her E that way. If she uses the E, She's basically free to kill for the next 10 seconds, okay? Keep that in mind. That's really important. So I would say it's hard, but you can make something work. If I would have a sub-tier between skill and hard, I would definitely put it in there. But if I would have to lean toward one, I would actually say it's a hard matchup, okay? 
You can go for TP, I personally like TP more. If you played well, you can kill her without Ignite anyways, especially when you have Profane. And I would go for Electrocute, I would go for Second Wind actually, because she can deny you a lot of CS otherwise. Um, and then go for Refillable and Second Wind. And then just play for short trades, try to bait her E and play the matchup that way. Alright, let's actually go over to Tristana. Uh, Tristana is a skill matchup, actually it's hard. Same thing with same thing with Sundra basically. In my personal opinion, I would say it's hard, but you can you can do stuff after you have Dirk. Before you have Dirk, don't even touch her. Seriously, before you have Dirk, don't even touch her. Then you TP back into lane, and as soon as you have Dirk, the world looks completely different. Okay, you can actually E onto her, you can auto attack her, Q her, or just EQ immediately to dodge out on one more auto attack from the E. Then wait in stealth. Okay, and then maybe grab rock, keep keep attacking her, and the lower you get, the more damage you deal, because I would actually go for Presence of Mind and Last Stand again, together with either Conqueror or Electro. This is one of the few matchups where I would maybe consider going Conqueror, but mostly I would actually go for Electrocute and the usual Electrocute setup with TP, though. TP is really essential here, and it's the same pattern as Syndra. Be careful, one thing, she can use W level 1 and jump into you, and then you lose more than half of your HP when you walk up too far. So be careful of that. Always hold your abilities and level up when you see what she has. You can see what she leveled up by the explosion of the minions. Tristana's never skill Q level 1, they always skill W or E. Meaning, if if you can see a small explosion on the, on the minions, that's her passive E damage, okay? And then you know, okay, she skilled E, I'm fine. I can basically walk up and maybe Q a minion. I always start Q against Tristana, not W. And then if she doesn't have that explosion, she either hasn't skilled up anything or she still has her W up. So you actually want to be really careful with that. Okay, so let's actually move on right here. Next up on the list, we have Swain. Swain is played rarely. I played against one or two. This is a Conqueror matchup, by the way. Against Swain, you play Conqueror. You dodge out on his root and his pullback thing. And as soon as you have that, you can run him down. He can't do anything anymore. You can run him down after that. That's the only mechanic you need to know. And you have to stall out his R. So using R on him while he actually uses R to stun him is a really good way to outplay him. And after that you win you with your basic abilities because you have Conqueror and you have your empowered damage from auto attacks and also from your from your Q and like basically from everything else. And this is a matchup you can go Ignite to actually. I would actually say against Swain Ignite is good because you reduce the ceiling by a lot and you also have kill pressure early on. Just make sure to not lose too much HP. The setup for me personally would be Electrocute with Second Wind and Overgrowth. Don't get hit by too many Qs, but it's okay if you get hit by some because you have Refillable and you have Long Sword with Second Wind so you can actually heal up a little bit, right? So that's how I would approach this matchup. And if he has Rileys, you are never allowed to jump into him because he can slow you and you never get out of his R. Never ever. Especially if he has Ghost. Even if you flash away, he can just run you down. Unless you are standing like below, like under the tower. That's that's the only thing, okay? All right, let's move on here. We have Talia next. Talia is... So against the good Talia, she perma pushes the wave, she holds her stones, and she also holds her knockup, okay? So that's why it's hard to play. I would actually just play for farm. You can try to walk up to her and then grass queue her, okay? And then basically with your second wind, you heal up. You will heal up again, and that way you can actually outtrade her a bit because she's never going resolve. She's most of the time going for first strike, maybe even airy. I've I've seen some, or maybe even electro. But that's that's a rare case, at least for me. Also, face rush is really annoying. So if they go face rush and resolve, which can theoretically happen, then you have to adapt. You don't really fight her that much, but you can actually proc her her resolve then with with your Q. So you grab Grass Q, you walk up to her, you Q her, she Qs you, but you are invis and you just W away from her Qs after that. And then it's actually quite easy to uh, to hit her with it, okay? So that's how I would approach the matchup against Talia. And then you can basically flash her level 6. She can't really do anything against that. She has no mobility, so that's something you should definitely consider doing against, against Talia. And I would go for, as I said, Electrocute, Second Wind Overgrowth, Refillable with Longsword and TP. Alright, next up we have Talon. Talon is a skill matchup. It really depends on who is spacing better with auto attacks and whether or not you are dodging his second W rotation, basically. And if he jumps onto you, make sure to have Grass Q ready always and use Grass Q instantly. Okay, so if he uses Q onto you 
and he has like two stacks, use Grass Q and W away. After that, he can't connect any more abilities and he can't proc his passive. And that's the key. And then if he walks close to a wall and he's actually in kill range, you can EQR him. Even if he goes invis, if you hit your EQ ice, you can still kill him with it, okay? So that's how I would actually approach it. And you can also flash him. Be careful of roams, ping your team that he's roaming, and then you should be Gucci and you should be good to go. Oh, and against Talon, I would go for the typical setup with Electrocute, with a Second Wind, and with Presence of Mind, and with Last Stand, basically. It's just the most damage that you can get early on, and I really like that. I really like that setup against Talon. You can also go for Mana Flow Band and Scorch in this matchup, actually, because through the sudden impact changes, plus Scorch, you actually get a lot of free damage, like 40 to 50 free damage, which is really nice. Alright, let's keep taking a look here. The last one was Talon. Okay, next up we have Twisted Fate. Oh, this is hard. If he uses his W, his free food, you can E onto him, okay? That's the first thing. So keep that in mind. If he doesn't use his W, which is really unlikely, it's really hard because he can just pick gold card and stun you whenever he wants. His R counters you pretty hard though, so I'm actually considering to put this in hard. Um, how do you play the lane actually? The lane is actually played by trying to E onto him as soon as he uses W. You can even get hit by his red W. As soon as you see that he has blue or red card and he picks it, you can already E onto him. If he hits those, it doesn't really matter because you can E auto Q afterwards and then you auto win the trade. There's no way he wins the trade otherwise. Be careful of roams, ping when he's level 6, spam ping your team, please. I, I've seen this so often with, with students that they don't spam ping it and then the enemy, like, the enemy bot just gets two kills and in the current meta, like, it's really hard to come back from that. So I would actually say TF is a really good pick currently, generally speaking. And also it is a relatively hard matchup if he, if he plays it properly. But he will just push you in permanently and you have to try to either push against it or go in as soon as he actually uses his, his W, okay? Okay, next up, after Twisted Fate, we have Vagar. Vagar is free LP, don't get hit by his Q too much early on, actually don't get hit at all. Play around his E cage a lot, okay, and you can E onto him whenever you want, like there's nothing that can hold you back from Eing onto him. You can just EQ auto attack him, proc Electro with it, and then W away, and he can't trade back, it's so simple. And then after that you can just one shot him with a simple EQ flash RWQ auto attack. Um, because he can't really move when he's rooted. And yeah, that's basically how I would approach this matchup. I would go for Electrocute, I would go for Presence of Mind for Last Stand, for Longsword, and for Refillable. And then you can go for Flash TP. So that's how I would approach the matchup against, against Vega. It's basically a free matchup. Okay, now we actually have Velkos. Velkos is really hard to verse, actually. You have to dodge his Q, and if he angles it right, like... This matchup is highly dependent on the level of the player, okay? If you play against a really good Velkos, this is really hard to verse. Like, really hard. I'm even considering to put it into impossible tier. Because the Q angling can be really weird and Velkos mains always know it better than you do. So that's the issue. They always have that information gap. And then you can also never really jump onto him because he can just use his, his knockup. Um... Yeah, and as soon as you, the problem is, and this is something you have to avoid, as soon as you jump onto the Velkos and you don't kill him, after that he can Q you and angle it in a way where his, where his R gets the full rotation up. So you basically have to dodge his Q, but at the same time you have to dodge his R, which is simply not possible, and that's why you die. And also it deals so much true damage that it's actually really hard to verse, okay? So I would definitely say Velkos is a very hard matchup, you can even consider to put it in impossible tier. Alright, now that we talked about Velkos, let's actually move on here. Oh yeah, the rune setup, I almost forgot. The rune setup is Electrocute with Second Wind and with Overgrowth, for me personally. You can also go for First Strike, that's equally good. I also like to go for First Strike with this. I kinda, I don't know, I kinda do it based on feeling in this game. Okay, now we have the single-handedly hardest Kiana, like literally the hardest Kiana matchup in existence in my opinion. I would actually even add another tier right here, add row above, and just like, oh, oops, wait. Uh, bup, bup, bup. And call it dodge. 
simply, like honestly, against Vex. Uh, this is a really hard one, man. I would actually say, I don't want to say dodge the game, but you just farm back against her, and in team fights you can do something. But you can't trade with her at all. No interactions possible, apart from maybe queuing her. But then she can queue back. It's really bad. It's really really bad. I'm not gonna lie, because whenever you dash, she actually gets a stack and she can auto attack you. So, yeah, I would actually play first strike refillable here with long sword and then like flash tp and also just go for sudden impact and treasure hunter second wind doesn't even help you you don't even get much value from second wind because if she hits one ability she always hits all of the abilities because you are feared and that's the that, like that's the annoying part about it maybe you can go for bone plating right but generally speaking i think just going for a little bit more flippy coin style here with first strike and sudden impact treasure hunter is really good and if I say first strike, I mean first strike, free boots, triple tonic, and then cosmic inside. And then you go for sudden impact and treasure hunter, okay? Alright. Good. Let's actually move on right here. Then we have Victor. A good Victor is impossible to beat. Thorn's shield is a must here. Second wind is a must here. You can't really play against this guy. He's similar to Orianna, actually. But his shield is the only ability and his W... That makes it impossible for you to actually jump onto him. Like, you just don't do it. It's just not going to happen. You lose the trade instantly because as soon as he hits double Q and he still has his shield, you already, like, your E already does no damage. And even if you use auto Q after that, he can just follow up with E auto attack, W, and then, like, you are just Half Life, man. And also, if he goes for the A resetup with Resolve, it's really hard to verse. So, I would actually say Victor is definitely impossible to beat. Play for minimizing here, and if you have the opportunity, you can maybe try to dodge his E by spacing it. But a good Victor, and that's the thing, a really good Victor will hit his E. He just hits the E, bro. I don't know why, but this ability is impossible to miss if you are really good. I'm not even saying Victor is broken. I'm just saying if you play him really well, if you are really good, then it's really hard to verse, okay? So that's why I would actually put Victor into impossible tier right here. All right, so now we have Vladimir, Vladimir. I would say skill or hard, but probably more hard. I mean, if you play against a really good Vladimir, you can also put him into impossible because he will always zone you with Q. He will never walk up if he has no empowered Q. Yeah, so you basically have to dodge his... You basically have to... How do I explain this? You have to wait for him to use his empowered Q and then you can like jump onto him. The problem is in that moment he will use W and E and then you are out traded. And after that he is just running away and you can't trade anymore. And then he's just waiting like 20 seconds. And in that time you actually have a window because his W is not up. But apart from that I think if he plays it right and never goes for bad trades he just auto wins the game because his scaling is 10 times better than yours actually. So that's the issue with Vladimir. Um, it's a really hard matchup actually to play. You don't get outraded early on too hard, but it's just a battle against time. You don't win the battle because it's relatively similar to Cassidy. The difference is you can trade Cassidy and he has no way to sustain it, but Vladimir just has healing. So yeah, that makes it really hard to actually verse him. Against Vlad, I would still go for Electro though, because you can get some CS advantages here and there if he trades if he trades badly. So I would go for Electro, second wind. Or you can also go for Electro with Last Stand. That's also fine. I personally go for Last Stand with Presence of Mind against against Vladimir. And then just go for Short Raids with Long Sword and Refillable. Okay. Next up we have Xerath. For me personally, Xerath is an easy matchup. Actually, it's a skill matchup. If you are really good on Kiana and I'm dodging his stuff, you're good to go. This really depends on daily form. If the Xerath has a good day and a good Xerath will hit his Qs, you will literally feel like he's scripting. But he's probably not. He's just really fucking good at the champion. So I would actually say, be careful with Xerath. Dodge his stuff, okay? And play aggressive as soon as he actually uses his Q or his W. Then you can E onto a minion and go onto him. He's really annoyed by that, okay? And then you have to basically E onto him, Q him, or like E onto a minion, Q him, and W to the side immediately. Because most of the Xerath instantly use their E after that. And if they just would if they would just hold the E, it would be a lot easier for you to actually trade back after that. So I would actually say it would be a lot easier for them to trade back after they hold E. Because then they can just E you after you go out of stealth or like use WQ. 
Um, yeah, so I would actually say it's a skill matchup. It really depends on the players, and I would go for TP, for Electrocute, for Second Wind, and also for Resolve with Longsword and Refillable. Okay, then we have the two brothers. Since the playstyle doesn't really change against both brothers, I would actually say we just cover them. Basically like this. I would say Yawn is a hard matchup, Yas is impossible. Yas has a shield, he has a swind wall. You can't really trade against him if he messes if he doesn't mess up. Just play safe against him. You can try to get a good trade in with EQ, but if he has his shield. You don't deal damage with that. And if he is good, he will not waste his shield for nothing. Also, he will try to zone you off minions with his W wind wall, and that's really annoying as well. So against Yas, I would actually say sit back, try to farm as well as possible. Still go for Electro. I wouldn't go for full strike in that in that sense. You can actually go for full strike, maybe trade Qs and get some gold. So that's also one option. I wouldn't write off first strike completely. But apart from that, I would actually say mainly focus on farming. Try to get a good trade in here and there. And also play for TP, I wouldn't really go for Ignite. So you are going for um, First Strike or Electro. If you go for Strike, I would go for Triple Tonic. I would go for Magical Boots. And I would also go for Cosmic Insight. And then you can go for a Sudden Impact, Treasure Hunter, second. Against Yawn, it's actually a bit different. If Yawn uses his W, you have to space it a bit. You have to pretend to walk up and then you can maybe W away, dodge his W. And if he has no Q3... Then you can easily jump onto him and e auto queue him whenever you want because he doesn't have those shielding options that Yas actually has. Okay, so I would actually say Yon is the easier brother to fight, but still not as easy. Like you still have to get him low slowly, and after that, if he's slow, if he's low enough, you can maybe try to to go for some stuff. Okay, that's how I would approach the lane. And in both matchups, I would actually go for flash and TP. Awesome. Now that we have Yon and Zed out of the way, we can actually move on to Z. Z is a skill matchup. Zone his Qs, dodge his Qs early on with W, and then when he uses his W, you can actually E forward in that exact moment, or W away, and you have to bait him into using W. You basically have to show him that you're better, and that's why it's a skill matchup. You have to walk up, and by walking up to him when he has W, you are basically saying, come on bro, use your W, hit your EQ, and I will dodge it. And if you dodge one of the Qs, he will only hit two abilities, he won't proc Electrocute. And after that, he's basically tradable for like 11 seconds until his W is gone. I don't know the exact cooldown, but it's a lot, I think it's around like 11 to 13 seconds, something along those lines, right? After it's gone, obviously it's like 20 seconds, but the W is still like standing on the map. So that's why I'm saying. And it's there for like 6 or 7 seconds, meaning you have like, I, I think it's like 13 seconds cooldown. I'm not like 100% sure. And then you can basically fight against him. Also, the person that uses R first loses. Remember that. If Zed uses his R first, you can always R him instantly when he comes, like, in an instantly when he comes out of his R behind you, you can R him instantly. If you time it well, he has no option of dodging it except for using Flash, maybe, okay? That's the only way. If he has W placed and he uses R, his W timing doesn't really matter. If you play like if you time it well, he will get hit by your R, okay? And you have to stand close enough to the wall to actually make it happen. So the next thing is the rune setup. I would actually go for electrocute presence of mind last stand with ignite against that. No doubt about that. So that's actually the, the important part. And you ult team fight him really hard. And uh, you also go ignite in this matchup because it's a really trade heavy matchup. You can also play it differently. You can also go for first strike for Dorn's shield, or like just play for Dorn's strike for Dorn's shield. Sorry. So instead of going Dorn's shield, you can also go for refillable second wind, um, and first strike. That's what I was about to say. And then just play for mid late game team fights. That's also something you can do. And you can also proc first strike here and there, but it can be hard when he has his W because the W E, if he's good, is always hitting. All right. Okay, so let's actually move on right now. Next up, we have Zix. Zix is a hard matchup. I would actually say Zix is impossible. He outrates you. He always has prior. He always has his W that can basically be placed right under his ass, and then he's just gone. You know. So this is also a very hard matchup to verse. He's not really played mid lane anymore, but I still want to consider it. I would actually go for Electrocute still and for Second Wind and Overgrowth because in Skirmishes you can actually like out damage him really easily. And also TP, obviously, slash TP. Next up we have Zillion. This is like a farm lane. 
but you I, I actually think Zillion is free LP. If you are good, you are not getting hit by his Qs. You can E onto him whenever he uses one Q and then he can't hit the second one to stun you, right? He can hit the second one, but it won't stun you. So I would actually say go for the go for the route that way. And then you can also go for Electrocute with Last Stand and with Presence of Mind, exactly. And just play the game that way. And that's how I would actually approach the matchup against against Zillion. And when he's level 6, make sure to wait when he uses R. And then when it's actually like gone, when the time of R is gone, you can actually see a small icon under his, his champion icon. Then you can actually see, okay, the R is gone and now I can use my abilities to, to kill him. Um, I actually think I have a good example of this. If I actually go to my YouTube pretty quick. Alright, so if I actually go to my YouTube here. I am pretty sure that I do have a good example of this. Was it this one? Let me just skip forward here pretty quick. So right now I am having before, but... Exactly, so that's how I would actually approach the matchup against against Zillion. Next up we have Zoe. Zoe is a hard matchup, I don't have to like rethink this a lot. When there was Prolas back then, this was actually really easy to play, but now it's actually quite hard. She can just perma push the wave with her Q. If she holds her if she holds her E, you have a problem because then you can never really jump onto her. The problem is a good Zoe will always hit E. And if you get hit by her E, it's over. Like that's the one key factor. Don't get hit by her E. Don't get hit by her E. If you get hit by her E, you are basically dying. 100%. There's no way you do anything after that. So I would actually say don't get hit by her E and, and you are fine, okay? Yeah, apart from that, that's basically it. I would actually go for Electrocute here still to farm a bit, uh, to, to trade well. And then I would actually go for Second Wind and Overgrowth here with flash and tp that's how i would approach the matchup because she can auto attack you really annoyingly and also hit her q really often right so i would actually say zoe is a harder matchup but in team fights you are a lot stronger side laning is a lot stronger so you are definitely fine after the laning phase so you just suffer in the laning phase with many of these matchups and then after that you just win after that so yeah next up we have huey huey is either impossible or free LP. <laughs> ah, and that's why I will put it in skill. Because if the way is good, she holds her fear and she doesn't use it. If the way is good, she's not wasting too many abilities on a wave. And she's focusing you down with it, okay? And if the way is good, she has perma prior, she will go for one or two small tank items, maybe even like for Ruby Crystal or something, or maybe even Tabis, and you are unable to do anything. It's really hard to kill her after that because of her shield, because of Seraths, because of Zonia's that's in the game. So I would actually say this is a skill matchup though. Still, because in the early game, if she wastes her abilities, you can E onto her and she's the freest champion to kill ever. She has nothing anymore. If she uses two abilities, you can jump onto her freely and just like go for it, right? And you can also E onto her and then like Q instantly and then W behind her. And most of the time they will use their fear. And then it's like really, really easy to kill them as soon as they wasted their fear, okay? So that's how I would actually approach the way matchup here. I would go for Electro, I would go for, because you never proc for a strike, and that reduces the value of the rune. Then I would go for Second Wind, Overgrowth, and Flash DP. All right, next up we have the last matchup here, actually. So, Smolder. The Smolder is pretty easy. Don't get outraded early on. She can destroy you before level three. As soon as you are level three and you have Electro, E onto her, auto attack her, Q her. You proc Electro, you win. This is that simple, okay? And that's the main important part against Smolder. She outscales you, like, crazily. Like, the, it's insane how hard this champion outscales you. So you basically have to outrate her early on, get a CS lead that way, and you can actually get a CS lead against Smolder if you play well. Um, and then just play for side laning and for team fights basically. And also go Flash TP here. There's no need to go for... 
for ignite. I think you can kill her easily without ignite as well. And for runes I would also uh, for items I would also go for dirt into profane. I, I basically always go dirt into profane still. All right, and guys, that's basically it for for the matchup tier list slash guide. As I said, I'm not going into detail too much because this is supposed to be an overview, a basic idea of how to play the matchups. Okay, where you can actually do something, where you can't do anything. And if you have any more question, uh, questions, I want you to join my Discord. You can ask detailed questions right there. I will answer them when I have time. And there are many other Kiana mains. I think we are currently 85 people there. So make sure to join that. Uh, you can ask questions. It's completely free. You can still change your mind afterwards. Let's actually wrap this up for today. Thank you a lot for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or if I missed anything or you have a different opinion, guys. I am always happy to discuss, okay? So comment down, we can talk about everything. Just say respectful, all right? Because as I said, I'm a Kiana one trick. I just want this champion to be played by many more people and I hope this is helpful for, for other Kiana mains to actually approach the champion. Maybe, or like the matchups with maybe a different mindset, okay? So if this was helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out, have a wonderful day. Oh, 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 oh,